Hey guys, welcome to the shed on a very windy, blustery holiday. What, you don't like Mondana? Yeah, neither do I, especially after she stole that song from me, the greatest music composer the world has never heard of. Anyway, I am able to spend this Monday, February Monday, in my shed because of, yeah, that man right up there, Honest Abe. Thank you, Honest Abe. Anyway, we are, I need this again here in a minute. I don't need this anymore right now. Anyway, we are on episode two of a playlist on how to reset the neck on an arch top guitar. Now, Episode one, the link is right up there. The roof is rattling. I'm okay. Don't worry about it. Anyway, episode one up there right about now was called Face the Facts. And what it encouraged you not to do is listen to anything I say, or encourage you not to listen to anything I say when you buy up these arch tops with necks that are bad and you decide I can fix this. Episode 1 gave you all kinds of information about why that is an errant assumption, especially if you have a paltry budget. Paltry, the word of the day. Anyway, I did a couple other episodes about Econo Arch Tops. I'm going to give you a link up there right about now. I think I'll put them in a playlist together. There was one about what you need to know about Econo Arch Tops. And then another one about actually buying one. So if you ignored me through basically three episodes of why they're junk, why you're buying junk, and why you don't want to do a neck reset, then you are here with me today of your own accord. You just won't listen, will you? I will pray for you, son. Anyway, we are going to have to figure out how to steam the neck off of this. So we're going to have a couple do-it-yourself projects, one being to make a steamer. You can name it Stanley if you want to, but I'm going to use this West Bend 2.5 quart avocado green teapot. Why am I using West Bend? Because it's in Wisconsin, and we'll talk about that in a few minutes. Anyway, let's do step one of the tools we'll need. We're actually going to build this into something semi-safe that you can partially depend on as the first tool you'll need in this project. Let's get to the bench. All right, some people use cappuccino makers. Some people use um, soldering irons with a special tip, all that kind of thing. But the bottom line is the deal here is hide glue when it's cold it's solid as a rock when it dries up but when it even when it's cured when you heat it up it's going to cut loose and most of these old guitar necks are glued on with hide glue and that's kind of the given so we need something that's going to produce steam and we'll get down into those uh that fret groove i was talking about and drilling that out and inject steam so here's a way to do it First thing you're going to need is a hot plate that plugs into an electrical source. You're going to need that. Put that away. Um, they're harder to find anymore than you might think. Sometimes they're in the camping section. But we've got this teapot. I like this teapot. It is a West Bend teapot. A two and a half quart West Bend teapot. Um, and it's made in Wisconsin, so it's good. I'm made in Wisconsin, and I'm great. So... Pay attention to here. Automatic trigger. And then you can push this back and it stays up. That's a handy feature. I like this lip on here. It's going to become important. But anyway, West Bend 2.5 quart teapot. Avocado green classic. Matches the Easy Bake Oven from 1964. You're going to need a number 8 rubber cork. A number eight rubber cork fits right in there. You see that? Number eight rubber cork. You are going to need some quarter inch 
tubing. You can use this on a swamp cooler. You're going to need some 3 8 tubing that is not heat sensitive. Okay, you're going to need that. You are going to need a basketball inflator needle. See that? Let me put it up against the avocado green. See how that stands out? It looks like that. You're going to need a couple of clamps. You are going to need a golf tee. Some of you have golf, golf tees. Uh, use a red one or an orange one or even a yellow one. You're going to need some kind of bolt that has a wing nut on it that's about as wide as the spout on this thing. Now, let's talk about what we need to do. You're going to put the rubber stopper in the, in the teapot, in the spout. You're going to take some tape. You're going to go around the edge where they meet like this. You want to know how much of the stopper is still down in here. You end up with something that looks like this. Follow me here? See that? Now, you're going to want to put a piece of tape on the bottom and cut it so you can figure out where you're at here because we're going to put some holes in the stopper. This way and this way. I'm going to take a metric ruler. I'm going to measure across the bottom of the stopper from one edge to the other. It is 32 millimeters. That means halfway is 16. I'm going to put a mark at 16. I'm going to do this a couple of different ways as long as I know that I'm halfway across. If I do this a number of different ways, it's going to give me a scatter that says the middle is right there. Now, I'm going to draw a line across the middle, like so, and then I'm going to draw a spot up here, not too close to the edge, and a spot down here. Now, you notice the plug is tapered, the stopper is tapered. So, if I drill this way, I'm going to end up out into here. If I drill too close to the edge, it's going to break through, especially if I drill from the top. So you got marks that way, and you know where your middle is. We're also going to be drilling a hole through this way, here, between here and here, and I'll show you that in a minute. But the first, things we want, the first thing we want to do is take a series of progressively larger bits, one, two, and finally three, Drill down through this way to the top. Rubber is kind of hard to drill, so you're going back and forth reversing it. But you end up with two holes that look like this. See there? One there, one there. How do you know when the holes are big enough? Well, they have to be able to accept the copper tubing, which is here. You push through, and it should be very difficult to get the tubing through it like so you see that if it's too loose it won't work you want this to be able to seal around the tubing the other one has to be the right size to accept this golf tee so what's going to happen here is the steam is going to come out into this hole and if something happens where something clogs up like the needle in the neck or a kink in the hose or something like that what will happen is the steam will come into here and it will blow the golf tee out. It will serve as a check valve. Now, I was in a mud shack one time on a drilling rig that was moved out of Alaska and there are special clamps that go to steam lines and somebody put a clamp like this on a steam line. It cut loose, the room full, full of steam, the hose is flapping around, I couldn't see anything. If it would have hit me, it would have torn me up, knocked me out, and then I would have been burned by steam. So you always, when you're working with steam, have a check valve, like so. Okay, now I'm going to take a piece of tape. I'm going to go around the spout, see, like this, so I can mark it. Again, this flips back up and stays in place. There we go. And I'm going to fold it over like that. 
I'm going to eyeball where is the center of this thing by looking here. So I'll put a mark there, like so. And again, I know that's about the center there. Okay. Now, I know that this here is sticking up that far. I put that in like so. What I need to do now is make sure that I'm going to drill a hole through this way because I'm not going to depend on this to stay in there when this thing is pressured up and steamed up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill a hole through the spout all the way across and then I'm going to make sure that that hole drills through the stopper. You see that line there? That's what I'm going to try to do here. So I'm going to measure down halfway between here and here. You see that? And that's where my hole is going to be. So I take this, move it up to there, like so. And then I take this and go halfway about right there. And I do that on both sides where my mark is this way. You with me? Now here's what I want to do. I want to make sure that I already have my holes drilled in the cork. This one is for the copper tube and this is the check valve for the golf tee. I could also use a bridge pin off of a guitar, but I'm going to put that in there and line those up where I know that my line is going to drill between here. I don't want these crooked this way or that way because I am going to put a piece of tubing inside the cork once the hole is drilled. That way we're not just dependent on the tubing to hold the thing in place there or the, the, the rubber. There will actually be a piece of tubing in there. So once we've got that all lined up and eyeballed up the way we want it, then we just come in with a bit here and make a mark there. And we're just going to go all the way across till we hit the other side and drill through. All right, you see that? There we go, right there. So now we're going to reverse the bit. We're going to hold everything in place and back the bit out and go in a top and go in a time or two and get that rubber out of the way because rubber is bad to drill through. Like so. We're going to do a couple progressively bigger bits until everything is going to fit the size of the bolt we want to put through. You with me? Okay, so I'm working on the cork right now. Till we can get most of those rubber shards out of the way. One last one will get us to be the size we need. You want to be careful because this stuff bites and wants to spin on you. There we go. Now, the quarter inch tubing will go through here, like so, all the way through the cork and end up out here. Now I'm going to go to each side of the tubing with the bit that's going to give me the size I need to accept the bolt that's going to go through and act as my pin that holds everything in place and just make that hole the right size like so. I'm going to take a little sandpaper now and go on the inside and make sure there's no burrs that will hold anything up. 
or cut anybody or anything like that. There we go, all good. But you see there? Oh, this is Chick Flick Teal Pointer Time. Hole there, hole there. All right, let's catch up. I have installed a piece of quarter inch copper tube in there. I have run a drill bit through that I know will let me accept, will let it accept this piece of bolt and this wing nut on the end here like so, you see, like that. Because now what will happen is I can take forever and precious production time and camera time to pull this out, line these up like so, and run the bolt through there and put a wing nut on it. All right, you see that? I can get this on here. Okay. All right, you see that? That cork is going nowhere. And we're not just depending on the rubber, I mean the stopper. It's not going anywhere because it's got a piece of tubing run through there. Now, we are going to push our copper tubing through. Like so, that goes into, down into the pot and we want to make sure that it's in there quite a bit and we've got our golf tee. Now I'm going to cut that off a little bit where it's sticking, not sticking up so far but it will solve the same uh, purpose. If something starts to build pressure this will be the weakest point so that's the whole idea here. So now we're going to put a clamp on here and we're going to take our 3 8 tubing and put it over the top, press it down there quite a bit, and we're going to put the clamp on. And then on the other end, we're going to put the clamp on as well, and we're going to put our inflator needle inside of the tubing. It's starting to get chilly out here now, but we're going to do that like so and clamp that down. All right, there we go. Now we're just going to pin up everything together and we're going to put some water in here before we do and get the hot plate out and see what happens. Maybe this thing will blow up. Who knows? All right, I got some special water here. I think it's safety water. So it's been safe for me at least. All right, see you in a minute. All right, we got everything hooked up. We'll put our little check valve in and there we go. See what happens. We should have some steam coming out of this needle here in a couple minutes. All right, there we go. There's the steam. Everything intact, nothing cut and loose. Easy money. Let's do some guitar necks. All right, guys, it was literally that simple. Um, you have something that is relatively safe, I guess. Um, no, it's not, so don't try to go there. Anyway, it's got this uh, golf tee slash bridge pin. You know you can use bridge pins for um, golf tees and vice versa, right? You know that, right? Anyway. So, we got step one done, and again, if you haven't seen it, refer to the playlist up there about neck reset on whatever kind of guitar that is you have there that you're thinking about sticking too much money into. We're going to go ahead and build a shop mate for this guitar to have its neck brutally tore off, ripped off, and burned off. So, you're going to have to wait a week, and I know that's difficult. I'm teaching you patience and endurance, because both of those are part of the Beatitudes. And I will see you next time. Hey, give me a like and subscribe. You know you want to. It'll make up for all that other stuff you did or did not do.